because the stewed meats are made using brown sugar, which we burn or caramelize to give that deep, rich color and flavor. Who love their brown sugar? Say, ah. Come on, man. Anytime I'm making a roast, I yeah. love brown sugar yeah, with it. Yeah, I knew. That's why I looked over at you. I was love, like, like, for real. Oh, my <laughs> God. We're going to cook a roast on the Family Channel. Man, well, you know, you know. What's good, y'all? It's the Demachettes React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today we're back with another American Reaction. Yes, yes. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell, because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey guys, before we get into this episode, uh, we're doing something a little different. Caleb actually has a studio, and uh, this is what it looks like. It's got this really cool oh, vintage okay. uh, aesthetic, and uh, if you are interested in finding this place... I already uh, right, knew he had like a little backdrop and everything, but this is mm -hmm. the first time yeah, he showed it. the background and all, you know what I'm saying? So it's an appreciative moment. Mm -hmm. You can find it at vintagestudio.la on Instagram, and you can book it out on Pure Space. Link in the description below. So we've done this before. Let's do it again. If the Caribbean was a family, you know. Jamaica would be the one in charge of the music. Bahamas in charge of the guest list. You got Team Mofongo, Team Baguette, Team Amsterdam. You got Team Crumpet, the Bougie Crew, the Homeboy Crew. And once again, Dominica is quietly reading a book in the corner. And then, just when the party starts getting good, the twins arrive. Decked out, these guys came to the party prepared. Welcome to Trinidad and Tobago. Fire analogies. He be putting it together right. Everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. Get your GN merch at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. So Trinidad and Tobago, I actually had the pleasure of meeting some of you guys, the Trini Geography peeps, when I briefly visited a few years back, and some of you guys will be featured in this episode, so woohoo. Well, for what it's worth, we do have a little bit of Trinidad and Tobago with us today. With that, say hi to Mr. Mason. How you doing? Good afternoon, all you What's the scene? My name is Mason, as Barb said. Um, half Trini, half Jamaican. Okay. Hands down the best Caribbean mix in the world. If you disagree, Go argue with your mother. Do you have a Trini the mother. mom or Trini dad? <laughs> my mother is Trini and my dad is Jamaican. One thing you just got to say to the world about Trinidad and Tobago before we start. Go. Can't play mass if you're afraid powder. What does that mean? Don't go into something knowing some about to happen and be surprised when it happened. All, All right. right. <laughs> you know the <laughs> is coming. All right. This episode is going to be a mess. <laughs> All right. We've done twin yeah. island countries before, you know, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Barbuda, Sao Tome and Principe. But Trinidad and Tobago are twins from a whole new level. Let's just go to the map now, shall we? Trinidad and Tobago is the most southerly of all Caribbean island nations, considered part of the Windward Islands in the Lesser Antilles. They are made up of Trinidad, which makes up about 93% of the landmass and holds about 95% of the population, as well as Tobago, the smaller yet spunky sister island. They are located about 80 miles southeast of Grenada, and at the closest point, only about 7 miles or 11 kilometers to the southern Icacos Peninsula to mainland Venezuela across the Columbus Channel. Also nearly the same distance between Shakashakare Island to the Makuro Peninsula up north across the Bocas del Dragon mm, or the Mouth of the distance. Dragon Channel. Fun fact, Shakashakare used to be a leper colony. By the way, see this little guy, Patos Island? It used to belong to Trinidad until 1942 when it was ceded to Venezuela. Speaking of which, they have about 35 smaller islands and islets, mostly off the west coast of Trinidad and four off of Tobago. In any case, administratively, Trinidad and Tobago is made up of nine regions, three boroughs, two city corporations, and one ward, which refers to the entire island of Tobago. Tobago is a ward. The capital city is Port of Spain, which is its own city corporation, and it is the only capital city named after another country that they are not. The country has two international airports, one for Trinidad, Picaro International, and one for Tobago, ANR Robinson International. Otherwise, the port of Port of Spain is the biggest and busiest shipping port and passenger sea port. There are ferry services two to three times a day between Port of Spain in Scarborough, Tobago. The trip only lasts about two and a half hours and is super cheap, usually less than 20 US dollars round trip. Roads go to most part of the islands in the north. However, roads stop and are disconnected for about 10.5 miles between Maricel Bay and Matalot Bay. This means if you wish to visit any of the secluded and isolated beaches on the north, you can only do so by a long hike or by boat. Same oh. story in the south. There are virtually no coastal roads and you will need to go inland or on boat to visit any of the coastal towns. So interesting side notes, Trinidad and Tobago 
Tobago weren't always one unit prior to 1887 when they merged. In fact, Tobago is the most diverse colonially switched island in the Caribbean. Wait, I thought I was fought over the most in the Caribbean. You were, but mostly just between the British and French. I'm talking about diversity of colonialists. Tobago at some point fell under the Spanish, Dutch, French, British, and yes, even for a brief period, it was one of the only two overseas colonies of the Corlanders in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. That means if they succeeded, Tobago actually could have been speaking either Polish or Lithuanian today. Mm. Oh, wow. This is why so many Angolized place names in Trinidad and Tobago leave clues to the former colonial powers that took over. For example, my house in Trinidad, I live near Margarita Drive. You can tell that it has a Spanish influence. They also have some French-inspired places, like these. And even in English, they have some funny-sounding names like Scorpion Lane. There's a literally a 21 Jump Street. Hard Bargain. Goodwood. <laughs> Goodwood. Pepper Village. <laughs> Pepper Village. You know that place? You been there? Yeah. What do they got? Do they got peppers there? They got, they got some stuff. Oh, yeah. Even a town called Redhead. Redhead. Wow, that's destiny. Book my flight. I want to be with my people. <laughs> wow. Another thing. Shortly after independence, 12 of the islands that were formerly governed by the British decided to form a new country called the West Indies Federation, with the capital, of course, being Port of Spain. They had a really cool flag. They even competed as a nation and won two bronze medals in the 1960 Rome Olympics. Remember that time you almost became my 11th province back in 1961? That's weird. Oh, because no, we're almost Canadian. In any up. case, that's enough back. Story. Let's talk about Look at Canada button up in there. <laughs> right. This is out the random random. Yes, Canada is just they could talk about the most hard stuff, but they're gonna make it seem nice. <laughs> it is, yeah. Some of the top notable sites that you can see if you decide to visit Trinidad and Tobago. Keyword Trinidad and Tobago. There are two islands and both have much to offer. To give us the rundown, here's Trinity Geography Adrian to explain. Hey everyone, I'm Adrian from Trinidad and Tobago. And if you decide to visit our country, we have lots of cool places for you to check out. To get a sense of history across the country, you can visit cool places like the Asa Wright Nature Center, the National Academy for the Performing Arts, mm. the Royal Botanic Gardens, the Red House, which is the seat of Parliament, Fort King George and the Tobago Museum, the National Museum and Art Gallery. Some popular lime in our hangout spots are the Waterfront Port of Spain, Pier 1 Chagaramas, Cross Cross in San Fernando, also known as the Cross, Arapita Avenue, which is the nightlife hub of Port of Spain, Queen's Park Savannah, and Pigeon Point Road, Tobago. Due to our diverse population, we have lots of religious buildings such as Mount St. Benedict Monastery and Holy Trinity Cathedral, the Gina Memorial Mosque, and Hindu temples such as the Temple in the Sea at Waterloo, and the Datatria Temple, and Hanuman Statue. We also have fun theme parks for little recreation such as the Five Islands Amusement Park, Skywalk Bay Adventure Park, Harry's Water Park as well. And of course one of the most iconic landmarks of the country, the Magnificent Seven Houses. Make sure to find all seven of them while in Port of Spain. There you go, come visit and have some fun with us. And of course one thing Trinidad definitely boasts are the copious amounts of beaches, waterfalls, forests and overall nature zones that get pretty intense. We'll explain more about that in the next section. The <laughs> So we've covered every Caribbean nation and we've come across some interesting physical features. Then Trinidad and Tobago steps it up and adds a whole new category to the game. We'll talk about that in a bit, but first, the motion graphic. First of all, the countries so we've covered every <laughs> what Caribbean was that? nation. Like, you know, just put that up <laughs> features. Then Trinidad and Tobago steps it up and adds a whole new category to What is that? Like you guys just put that in there and it's just Is it a knife? Is that like something from oil? Is, he, is that like oil that he's putting up from the ground? It's just that thick or something? Even, and then he's stepping on something, I, I guess, for to, I don't know, like, mm -hmm. yo, what, we need answers. Yeah. I can't really even make out what it is. I tried. I said my piece. Mm -hmm. You want to give a, a, a shot? I said, is, I asked, is it a knife? Oh, okay. I, like a, a big one. I, I don't uh -huh. know. It looked like a bat. Look like he stuck his. What's going on? Stuck something in there. He tried to put it up. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it. Volcano? We'll talk about that in a bit, but first, the motion graphic. First of all, the country is located on the Gulf of Pariah to the west, the Caribbean Sea to the north, and the Atlantic Ocean to the east. The country is also at the very convergence of the South American and Caribbean tectonic plates, which in return puts them in the middle of various fault lines. The northern part of Trinidad literally straddles the El Pilar Fault, a transformed fault line that essentially forms the northern range, the tallest mountain range of the country. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Cerro del Aripo. This is also the source of the Caroni River, the largest 
largest and longest in the country, which also feeds into the Caroni Arena Reservoir, the largest inland body of water. Most of the rest of Trinidad is flat with only two smaller hilly regions known as the Central and Southern Range caused by the Dunmore Hill Thrust Fault and the Los Bajos Fault Line. The country has two main wetlands that many rivers drain into, the Caroni Swamp just under Port of Spain and the Nariva Swamp on the east side. Otherwise, much of Tobago in the north is hilly with its own range known as the Tobago Main Ridge and the highest peak there being Mount Dillon. Just on the west side of Tobago, close to the airport, you also find the famous diving spot Buco Reef, which has the coral gardens and the nylon Ooh, pool, nice, a nice. natural pool only one meter deep that many people visit. Otherwise, the country experiences a maritime tropical climate with a dry season that lasts five months of the year, followed by seven wet. Finally, due to... And wrong with that. <laughs> um, I remember one video recently I asked, uh, there was another Caribbean, I believe, that was talking about, and I was like, do they have tsunamis? Because they mm -hmm. mentioned about the weather, I think, was being really good. Right, right. And you guys that came in the comment section and said, yes, they do. So, being that they're surrounded by water, um, is that the same question? Do you think they have mm -hmm. tsunamis? I think, Flooding? overall, majority of the Caribbeans have the same climate. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. may deal with the same things. But then they have this big mountain range in the mm -hmm. northern hemisphere, so that yeah, could be yeah. a blockage from... You know what I'm saying? Things or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. yeah interesting. Their location so far south in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago generally lies outside the hurricane belt. Nonetheless, occasionally they may experience an earthquake every so often, the strongest one ever recorded in 1997, hitting 6.7 on the Richter scale. So here's the thing, because Trinidad is literally on the exact fault line between the tectonic plates, the country in return has some unique qualities. For one, geothermal. Although I got, I, I'm sorry, before we get to the geothermal, can you handle earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, or tsunamis more? Which one? Quickly, quickly, quick. Okay, that was too long. The earthquakes, I guess. The earthquakes. No, no, no. Cause lately the earthquakes been. Mm -mm. No. Imagine earthquakes and all your stuff falling off the shelf. You gotta reclean everything. You just vacuum and everything. Mm. I would personally hurricanes. just stick to what I know. I'm gonna yeah. stick to my hurricanes. Yeah. Okay. My bad. Same for you. Which I think would uh, be your best fit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just gonna back wait. <laughs> Nowhere near the level of other Caribbean islands. We have about 20 known mud volcanoes, mostly in the south part of the country. That's the most notable was. in the town yeah. of oh. Second, Trinidad has the world's largest deposit of natural asphalt. This place, known as oh, wow. Pitch Lake, stands at over 40 hectares in area and 75 meters deep, holding about mm. 10 million nice. tons of asphalt. Okay. Do they like use that asphalt for the roads or anything? Or like, uh, they should good, use it more question. so than they have been. At least the roads I've been on in Trinidad. And that's the thing, <laughs> Trinidad is unique in that economically they are primarily industrial, putting a huge emphasis on the petroleum and petrochemical sector. To explain more on that, here's Noah. All right, let's get to it, shall we? Insert VFX intro here. So, the Caribbean. These countries are always fun. Going back to the Pitch Lake we just discussed, the reason it is there is because much of the southern part of Trinidad lies on a heavy oil reservoir zone, both on land and in the sea. In addition, they have heavy and rich natural gas deposits within their EEZ boundaries offshore. The largest one found in the NCMA, or North Coast Marine Area, and in the Columbus Shelf on the east side. The state-owned company- Are we talking about Bank Bank? Or are we talking about Lil Bank? Big Bank We're talking, we talking about bank. bank Bank, like, cause you know how people be, Fighting for that type of stuff, right? Yeah, and y'all yeah. have the natural, like, just right there, like, right there. Ain't yeah. no oil rigging for it. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Okay, now. Petrotrin operates over half of the country's development and manufacturing alone. This makes them the largest producer of natural gas in the CARICOM and the second oh, largest oil producer time. after Guyana. These alone account for about 40% of their GDP and 80% of exports. So, as you can see, despite the tropical Caribbean getaway it's exterior, really there's a huge energy sector emphasis that actually drives much of the nation. It's like a, like a supermodel that works on an oil rig. All this industrial activity has played a role in making them the fifth richest country in the Americas and classified as a high income economy. The best part, these resources have actually put them in a trade surplus and thankfully the government had actually used said funds to build their infrastructure quite well. The main international airport got a huge expansion in 2001. Roads were paved and more desalinization plants were constructed to help rural citizens get clean water. Properly allocating surplus. So that basically went back to what Barbie was asking the question, do they use it for the roads? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's yes, big yeah. big facts, it's a benefit. Well, well, they don't use it for all the roads. How the roads out there? And not all of them, because he kind of even <laughs> side out of him a little yeah, bit like, yeah. uh, maybe, sort of. <laughs>
to build their infrastructure quite well. The main international airport got a huge expansion in 2001. Roads were paved and more desalinization plants were constructed to help rural citizens get clean water. Properly allocating surplus funds to improve civil structure? That's like so hot. This has in return given Trinidad and Tobago one of the highest growth rates in per capita incomes in the Americas and is often seen as the finance hub of the Caribbean. <laughs> Finance hub, not tax haven. Sorry, I, I thought I misheard you on that. <laughs> Carry on. In any case, in Trinidad, the natural sites do not stop at a tar-filled lake. You can find bioluminescent beaches, a bamboo cathedral, amazing well. caves, yeah. and waterfalls. And it all harbors life. And speaking of life, there's a lot of wildlife going on. And to discuss that, here's Gary Harlow. Right! Check out this wild turtle that I just found. Okay. If you shake it, you can hear it. So, Trinidad and Tobago are actually quite unique compared to the other Caribbean islands due to the fact that long ago, it was actually connected to South America. About 100 species of mammals, 90 species of reptiles, and 30 species of amphibians can be found in the country. The country has two national birds, mm. one representing Trinidad, the scarlet ibis, and one representing the Tobago, the rufous-tailed chuckalucka. And in fact, birds are the most prevalent species found here, as over 480 species either live permanently or migrate here, including 18 kinds of hummingbird. Trinidad was even called the Iere, meaning land of the hummingbird by the native Arawak people. The country has 61 protected areas, including the Tobago Main Ridge Forest Reserve established in 1776. And finally. And that's why they have so many different habitats and mm -hmm. animals and things because they take care of it. Yes, that's yes. good. It really that's looked good. like a tropical paradise it really so far. Do, like, no joke. And the fact that they don't have no roads passing through where the beaches are. Mm, that's even better. Wait, that's, but how are we going to get to the beach? They say boat. Oh. Or hike. Oh. Um, I I do motion sickness before I run on exhaustion. Well, I'm sure they, they have some, like, it's not they that far away, They say no huh? roads oh. at all. And I just think how that kind of plays beach? it. Boats or hike. I can do the boat. We park our car, hop out, take the boat. We good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we yeah. good, we good that way. Mm -hmm. Just to get to the beach? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna make it work. I mean, off the coast, there are loads of coral reefs, but did you know? No, you probably didn't. <laughs> That Tobago has the largest known brain coral in the world. This massive guy sits at 10 feet or 3 meters high and 16 feet 5.3 meters across. Ad, ad lib exit. <laughs> Duh. Uh, see you later. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Well, I'm going to transition out of here. And usually I would do the food segment, and I will again one day. But Yo. Trinidad Geography Jason will be informing you today on all the wonderful food that Trinidad and Tobago I'm have to say, offer. We, I'll we just still need let him have it man. for this one time. Thank you, Noah. Speaking of animals in Trinidad, one thing they do have is snakes. I did have to turn a snake to sushi <laughs> with a cutlass. You just like. Whoosh. Yes. Well, as you can see, Trinidad and Tobago has quite a bit going on. It's lush yet industrious. So many flavors in Trinidad and Tobago, much like the intense cuisine we boast. To talk more on that, here's Trinity Geography Jason to explain. Hello, Geography peeps. My name is Jason. I'm here to talk about the food of Trinidad and Tobago. The food of Trinidad and Tobago, just like many other countries in America, is based on the cultures of the people that settled these right. lands. From our Afro settlers, we get things like cuckoo, callaloo, stewed meats, which are very interesting because the stewed meats are made using brown sugar, which we burn or caramelize to give that deep, rich color and flavor. Who love their brown sugar, say ah. Come on, man. Anytime I'm making a roast, I love yeah. brown sugar yeah, with it. Yeah, I knew. That's why I looked over I at you. I was like, like, for real. Oh, my <laughs> God. We're going to cook a roast on the family channel. Man, well, you know you know. For real. From our Indo settlers, we get things like dal, curries, flatbreads, yeah. which we call roti, and even our most popular street food, doubles. Then there's some unique dishes, bacon like our bacon shark, the clear mm. one of the best sandwiches by Paul Zimmerman on his visit to Trinidad and Tobago, and pilau, similar to jambalaya made of rice, stewed jambalaya. meat, and vegetables. We love big, bright, bold flavors. We hate bland food. We must have a hot sauce. In fact, yeah. one of the hottest peppers in the world, the Maruga scorpion pepper, comes from Trinidad. So if you've never... Okay. I agree. I love that. Like a bowl that's just full of big, bright foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so good, they, yeah. that was their version of jambalaya. It looked delicious. Yes, yes. We'll have to try it's crazy it. how, like, Senegal has it. Of course, Nigeria and Ghana. Um, oh, it was another place. And we was like, y'all have jollof rice, too? 
Oh, snap. Recently, we just heard of it, too. Yeah. Fill us in, y'all. Fill us in. Yeah. We forgot. Don't want to um, But now, all the way in Trinidad, they have their version of jollof rice. Yeah, but yeah, They yeah. say it's a version of jambalaya, but jambalaya is a version, version of, of jollof rice. Big facts. <laughs> yeah, it's universal, I see. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, our people travel. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Ever try Trinidad and Tobago food? I hope you do, because you're gonna love it. One of the biggest draws, especially on the beaches of Trinidad, is Bacon Shark. Uh, my personal favorite, Uncle Sam's, Richard's Bacon Shark, Natalie's, there's a few, you know, you can't go wrong really. It's basically a flour baked tortilla with, you know, lettuce, tomato, shark, pepper sauce, you know, don't put too much now. If not shark, you can also put different types of fish, kingfish, other fish inside the bake as well. So it doesn't always have to be shark. I know about oxidants. <laughs> oh, by the oh, way, uh, if you want to piss off a group of Caribbean people, uh, all you got to do is ask them. Yeah! Trinidad yeah. has the best KFC okay. in the islands. Trinidad, hands down, for okay. sure. Okay. Yeah, no, it ain't nothing. Well, another thing that adds 11 secret spices. What is hmm. the cho- Why does KFC have y'all in a chokehold? It's all over. It's all over. Cause I, I drive KFC, past it. For real, KFC is like a common topic every in almost every country. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's, it's when y'all say we have a better KFC than y'all. We hope so. <laughs> I forgot where, but KFC is so so good to people that they eat it for Christmas. Japan. Japan. Was it Japan? Japan. It's Japan. Yeah, it's an Asian. They celebrate it as a Christmas dish. Yeah, yeah. And they get a bucket of KFC. KFC is just like, y'all love some KFC. Well, we're like going to have to try the KFC outside. What are we missing on KFC? I don't know. <laughs> Oof. And herbs to the country are the people. Let's discuss them in the next segment. The... Yes. All right, so first thing, titles. You could also say Trinibagonian, but what is the most commonly used one? Trinis. Trinis, Trinis. there you go. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, what do you want to say about uh, Trini people, Mason? One of the biggest misconceptions is that Trini men does a real horn. That is five, ten percent tops. We cannot take the blame. Very quickly, uh, how would you explain the difference between Trinidad and Tobago? You see more, you know, African descent people. It's very small. You go the whole island in a day. Mm. Uh, my mm. favorite place is Store Bay. Love to swim there. Tobago's like the chill like relaxed place, Trinidad's like the industry place. Yeah. So for what it's worth, Trinidad and Tobago is disputably the most diverse island in the Caribbean. There is a long story that comes with this place, but first, let's do the demographics graph. Let we go. The country of Trinidad and Tobago has about 1.4 million people and has the highest percentage of Indo-Caribbean people per population out of all the Caribbean islands. The Indo-Trinibagonians descend from ancestors brought over from India in the 1800s, and they make up about 35% of the population. From there, about 34% are black or afro trinibagonians about 15% of the country claims to be mixed in whatever degree. Going off of that, about 8% are Dugla, a word that means mixed between African and Indian, mm. and the remaining 8% of the country are other groups, mostly Asian and European in descent. We use the Trinidad and Tobago dollar as the currency. We currently use types A and B plug outlets and drive on the left side of the road. If you use driving in Trinidad and Tobago, make sure your predictability skills are on point. If you don't use <laughs> indicators for sh**, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if you gotta get around, you get in the max. Yeah, yeah, we needed to hear that. Uh -huh. um, we ain't gonna be, we ain't, I ain't gonna be driving. We're gonna get the drive off. I'm gonna need that in my life. Because, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I'm gonna have to do, uh, we're gonna have to do a video with y'all driving on the left side of the road. Like, there's courses. I could film you from, I could no, be we gotta on take the side turns. of the road filming. You need to know in case something goes wrong with me. No, no, nothing's gonna go wrong with you. I'm gonna, need you, to, I'm gonna need you to get on that side of that uh, mm -mm. steering wheel and get it done. No. Yes. Mm -mm. Okay. I would dri drive every highway in a DFW before I do that. Okay, taxi. Because <laughs> <laughs> we need taxi. taxi. They'll like, know you're yeah. foreign, but try to be hospitable. Try to be nice, you know, so they don't overcharge you. That's all. Have nice. manners. That's the biggest key. The moment you open your mouth, they can tell. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Even with me. Even with you. Now, back to the people. As you can see by the graph that we just showed you, Trinidad has quite a diverse population. For one, it all started with the indigenous Arawak and Carib peoples that inhabited the islands first, speculated to have dated back to 5000 BC. From there, after Christopher Columbus stopped by in 1498, European involvement 
it started, and like most everywhere else in the Americas, separate waves of outside migration came in. Even though it was originally colonized by the Spanish, more French people settled in Trinidad, which played a role in creating their patois. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, you guys got a patois. Uh, the Atlantic slave trade brought in the Africans, and then later slavery was abolished, and then indentured servants were brought in from India. Later on, people like the Chinese and Arabs were brought in. So that's basically how they became what they are today. With all of this in mind, you'll have different groups of Trini people all over the country. And here are some of my fellow Trinis who grew up in Trinidad to give you a little bit of what it's like. One unique thing about growing up as a white Trini is that depending on what part of Trinidad you're in, they might not even realize that you're a Trini. When I was young, me and my family would go on like trips to the east for the weekend, for example, right? And people would come up to us and ask, oh, what country are you all visiting from? Because they thought that we were tourists. We, when they hear us speaking, be like, hey, where now? We're from the West. They'd be like, oh, <laughs> like some of them didn't even know that they had white trees, mm. which is pretty interesting, but makes perfect sense because, you know, white people only make up about 1% of the population anyways. So yeah, that was just sort of a unique experience growing up. I think what all Trinis can agree on would be our ability to make anything and everything an absolute joke no matter how dire the circumstances. So let's say the country's under some kind of curfew situation curfew parties. Oh, if there's on, a man. terrorism yes. or bomb threat, blow out sales in the mall. I think Trinidadians have like an unrivaled sense of humor mm -hmm. and like, we're very like proud that. of it. Like Thank that. you guys. Yeah. Alright, let's talk about language. So in Trinidad and Tobago, there is of course a Trini dialect and a Patois. They are two separate things. What's a Trini dialect the like? The dialect is just short and sweet. Trini people talk fast, they want to get to the point. What are some things only Trini people say? They don't say dumb. They'll say you're dotish. You're dotish or what? Like, are you stupid or what? I mean, they do say party, but we just say fet. Oh, fet, fet that's like French inspired. Yeah. Exactly, that's yeah. French. Juve, fet, that's French inspired. Juve, Trinis don't say kickback or hang, that is lime. lime. We're looking to lime, we're not looking to hang. Otherwise, there's the patois, which is actually French based and related to Haitian Creole or the patois spoken in places like Martinique and St. Lucia. And over time, the patois has been kind of dying out. It's kind of sad. But there is a revival attempt to bring it back. And here's one of you guys, the geography peeps, to explain. Bel bonjour tout le monde. No moi c'est Jake et puis moi sorti la Trinité et puis tabag. Now the language that I was just speaking is our Trini patois. It's a French lexicon creole. In 1783, Trinidad became heavily settled by French creole and French speakers from the French West Indies. This language was the lingua franca of Trinidad up until the early 20th century. The, sadly, this is an endangered language now. Mm. That's because the British Attorney General, Charles William Warner, oh, he gross, implemented but... an anglicization <laughs> policy to get rid of the French and French Creole influence oh. on Trinidad. Wow. However, you can still hear our Papua being spoken in rural communities such as Talparo, Blanchichez, Maruga, and Paramin, of course. Some things that you can learn to say in Patwa, how are you, which is Kumanuye, what's Kuma up, Sakafet, all is good, Tout bagay bien, Tout and bagay Ayo, bien. which means goodbye. Every ayo, Trini okay, uses yeah. Patwa nearly every day without realizing it. Mwe kwa ki Patwa ke vive toujours. I believe Patwa will live on forever. Thank you. Now, religion. So, faith was. Uh, before we get into religion, um, so far it seems. What you think the, the like the the challenge rate of this is one out of ten? I don't know. We did the Trini uh, slang already. We have because I was yeah, thinking so about it. It, like it wasn't that hard, and I think it's because we have French influences. Of course. So we know a lot of the French, like pronunciations. Of, they always uh, got that V sound, that Juve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you hear me? I like yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think I I think I can do the Trini. Okay. We need to do a part two. We got to. Yeah. The country is about two-thirds Christian and about 20% Hindu, 6% Muslim, and even there's a small community of Orisha adherents. Orisha oh. being a native religion of the Yoruba people in West Africa. You definitely see the presence of religion for sure. Otherwise, mm. despite the diversity, there are some things that are generally distinctly Trinbagonian. What do you want to add to the list of things that are distinctly Trinbagonian? I would say 
people just be in your business. People are nosy. <laughs> I drink water and mind my business. But most Trinities are a little nosy, especially really? neighbors. You know, they want to know when you come, when you're going, you know, all that. Two words, it almost means confusion and drama, commerce and bacchanal. You hear those words used to describe men and women who like to gossip, who like mm. drama. Like Ting, you feel me? Like, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Stop playing. In Trinidad, they call lighter skinned people either red or yellow. For example, I'm light brown. I would be a red, yellow tone. You'd be considered red. Yeah, exactly. Ain't <laughs> nothing wrong with that. That's just how they do it. Now, we can't sugarcoat everything. Yes, Trinidad and Tobago does have some controversies. For one, they have been at the crossroads of the drug cartel activity coming in from multiple mm. communities. It's hard to get exact numbers, but some sources <laughs> indicate that somewhere about 20% of Trinidad's informal economy is tied to cartel activity. This spills over into the fact that some areas of Trinidad and Tobago have high crime rates. The locals will know all the details, so just let them guide you. Trinidad was also a destination spot for quite a few Venezuelans during the 2019 refugee crisis, mm -hmm. which put a whole new situation on our small nation. We're not going to get too much into these topics. You are free to discuss them in the comments, but we got to move on. And what better way to move on than to discuss sports? Here's Art with the sports part. Let me go. Trinidad and Tobay, let's go! is nothing short of a massively popular pastime that the people take huge pride in. One unique thing that they do here, goat racing. Have you ever rode a goat? Yeah. Don't milk yeah, it though. Yeah. Goat milk is delicious though. Originating in Buco, Tobago, the sport involves jockeys that run alongside their goats on a hundred yard field. So both the racer and the goat have to be in good shape. You better yeah, yeah. be sending your goat to the gym or you're not going to win this race. No slacking. Otherwise, TNT has produced some notable boxing champions like these guys. They've made a few ways at the Olympics, racking up three gold medals, all in athletics. Anyway, soccer or football is a major pastime as well. Nothing made them happier than when their national team, the Soka Warriors, qualified for the 2006 World Cup in Germany. This made them the second smallest country population-wise to qualify after Iceland. In the end though, their favorite sport that cricket. they seem to excel the best would have to be cricket, obviously brought in by the British. This dude, Brian Lara, is considered one of the best cricket players of of all time. He alone has racked up quite a few world records in the sport and he doesn't eat crickets. He just plays it. You'll see cricket pitches. Right, now, so we do have our other channel, Doom Shacks Rec 2.0. Just want to throw this in there. We want to get involved into some sports and understanding yes, the culture yes, of that yes. as well. Go ahead and fill that, you know, go fit it out. We were looking for that all over the country, including the Queen's Park Oval in the Port of Spain, their most famous pitch, second largest in the Caribbean, able to seat 20,000 people. They love this sport. Wow. Well, that's it for me and Tarchin. We have to get back up to space. Thanks, Art. Well, whether it's sports or dancing, somehow trainees are always moving. The most active event or the best event in Trinidad would definitely be Carnival, Trinidad Carnival. Oh, everything's blocked off, people in the streets. You're, you're really experiencing something that very few places in the world can, can organize. The costumes, mm. the rhinestones, hand glued, hand stitched, everything is very done up. It's 100% worth it and it's a great time for sure. I'd recommend it to anybody that enjoys. To expound a little bit more on the cultural highlights of Trinidad and Tobago, here's Random Hannah to explain. Hi guys, I'm back. And remember, you guys can get a random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. Anyway, just like we discussed with the food, you will find an incredibly diverse mix within the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. Somewhere, somehow, you will find hints of indigenous Indian, African, French, English, Spanish, and even Chinese undertones within daily life. Their arts and literature have developed quite a few notable individuals, including V.S. Naipaul, who won not only the Trinity Cross, but also was knighted by the Queen of England in 1990 and won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2001. Visual arts have also made their names known worldwide. The first and most notable one being Michel Jean Casabon. After his death, the Trinidad and Tobago Art Society was formed, which helped countless talented individuals thrive and share their work. One nice. art form Trinis take super seriously, of course, is everything that happens in Carnival. Carnival to Trinis is not just a celebration, but a very very complex and meticulously organized art form. It's been said that which takes 365 days to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would want to say just about that long. Yeah. yeah. So my question is to the people who go like every single year. So every to our trainees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you guys do with your costumes? Do you rotate them? Mm. Do you sell them? Or do you just, you you don't care. You're going to wear the same costume and just add to it next year. Yeah, or do y'all put them in the museum for oh, art shows yeah. and let the people be able to see the history and the culture of how you operate with y'all. 
Yeah, because we do that. Customs. We do that. We put it in the um the art galleries. The art things. galleries. Yeah, yeah. That's a good question, babe. Once Carnival That's is good. over, the next day, people are already planning the next one next year. Ooh. Trinidad's Carnival is the largest in the Caribbean and disputably the third or fourth largest in the world, which wow. is impressive considering their size. Trinity Carnival includes the typical feathered costumes and stilt performers, but they also add distinct elements invented in Trinidad and Tobago, such as a limbo stick, sometimes even really? lit on fire. Holy and steel nah. pan drums, usually playing calypso and soca. Trinis are super proud of the steel pan drum. I just found out some really good news, everyone. Keith may not do the music segment. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, guys, Keith is busy. As you know, he moved to Florida. He has a job. He has a life. So we're going to have Jagger Peeps, Darlene, and Brandon from Trinidad and Tobago fill in. Take no. it away, guys. My name is Brandon. And I'm Darlene. And we're here to tell you all about the different types of music in TNT. Before we can dive into our various types of music, we must begin with Calypso. Calypso music was invented in 19th century China and has can trace its roots back to West African Kaisu. It was originally called the Poor Man's Newspapers as it was the main means of spreading current events across the islands at a time where literacy was not widespread. Chutney music. Chutney music is an Indo-Indigenous genre invented in Trinidad and is popular throughout Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana and Suriname. Chutney music is a mixture of Bajpuri music with influences from traditional Calypso and Bollywood filmy songs. Oh wow. Soca music was invented in the 1970s by Garfield Blackman, also known as Rashodia. His idea behind the genre was to fuse the African song and the East Indian song together right. to create a fusion song unique to Trinidad and today. Unity. Soca is groovier than Calypso and a bit up tempo and it is widely played throughout the Caribbean. Yeah. All right, man. So go ahead, drop in the comment section. Let us know what's your favorite style soca. of music. Or soca artist. Or soca artist. Yes, yes. Parang, parang. Parang music was brought to TNT by Venezuelan migrants and is traditionally sung during the Christmas period. Traditional parang music is sung in Spanish and accompanied by an array of instruments such as Cuatro, Stefan, Box Bass, Shak Shak, just the name of it. Some famous singers of Trinidad and Tobago are The Lord Kitchener Calypso Rose Mighty Sparrow Destro Garcia Marshall Montano Faye and Lyons Alvarez Bungie Garden Nicki Minaj And Billy Ocean, just to name a few Steel Pan The Steel Pan is a national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago oh, It is the only tune uh, national instrument created in the 20th century birthed in Trinidad and Tobago and it represents our culture and our people Thank you, Brandon and Darlene. Well, all right, since we've covered so much with Trinidad and Tobago from the pitch lake to the pitch of the soca music. <laughs> Only one thing left. We got to check out the pitch of their diplomacy abroad. Friend zone coming up. Yeah. Let we go. Well, let we go. <laughs> So when you have a country made up of many, many parts of the world put into one, you're going to have a lot of international interaction. Trinidad does know who they lime with. Mm -hmm. For one, they have a deep-rooted historical Canada. relationship with India, as 225 Canada. Indian Canada. indentured laborers mm. were brought over to the islands in 1845, and now, nearly 200 years Let's... later, they make up about a third of the entire population. Indian citizens are allowed to enter visa-free, and India has made numerous investment agreements oh, wow. with the nation. The U.S. and Canada have the largest Trini diaspora community outside nice. the country and have had close ties even before independence. Trinidad and Tobago are part of the Caribbean Basin Initiative that the U.S. fosters and seeks to build business and commercial services between them. And Canada is not only a major trade partner, but as we mentioned before, has always kept an eye on them ever since they had those halted talks about joining Canada as a possible province alongside with the rest of the Indies Federation. Having been a former British colony, obviously the U.K. is still in their periphery of diplomacy. Many Trinis go to the U.K. to study abroad and have family there, and also, of course, being within the Commonwealth 
of nations. When it comes to their best friends, however, of course, you have to look at CARICOM. The Caribbean community is already pretty tight as they are, but they do have their cliques. Guyana is a close one. Back in the 90s, they forgave hundreds of millions of US dollars worth of debt that Guyana owed to them under the okay. Paris Club Agreement, and thousands of Guyanese migrated to Trinidad and Tobago to find work. When it comes to their best friends, however, four out of five times, Trinis will tell me it's a little complicated, but most likely mm. the number one homie is Jamaica. As the two oh, largest yeah. Anglophone nations in the Caribbean, sharing a mutual British-based history and having some of the most powerful influences over the Caribbean, Trinis and Jamaicans have the biggest loving yet kind of rivalry, but like good rivalry relationship. Each one thinks their music is better, their food yeah. is better, their parties are crazier. Mm -hmm. It never ends, but when they actually meet each other in person, like face to face, it's like an instant connection. Wedding two months later, Trina making <laughs> babies shortly after. In conclusion, uh, Mason, you take it away. You're the Trini guy. I'm going to step off my stool. So now you're just going to speak from the heart, man. In conclusion, be it the music, uh, the festivals, the food, the people, the, the, the land. Trinidad is so unique, and every, every country is unique in its own way, but definitely a place to visit, definitely a place to go. You'll get, you might get a culture shock depending on where you're from, but if you go with manners, you will be welcomed and you'll have a great time. And Trinidad KFC is the best KFC in the Caribbean. All right, Mason Man, thank you so much for coming to no this problem. episode. Stay tuned, Tunisia. It's coming up next. Big man. What do you say? Again, Big man. If you go with manners, you will be welcomed and you'll have a great time. And Trinidad KFC is the best KFC in the Caribbean. All right, Mason Man, thank you so much for coming no to this problem. episode. Stay tuned. Tunisia is coming up next. Big man. Ting. Oh. Big man. Ting. Okay, the new is three, two, all right. All right. Not bad that you, brother. I like it. Okay, Trinity, we finally did it. Yeah, yeah. With finally, that y'all are nosy. <laughs> On every video we put out. Yeah. So when are you gonna do the Trinidad Geography Now episode? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> from multiple people. <laughs> Facts. Yes, but we love y'all. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. I like learning so much about them. Yeah, yeah. What did you like? I liked it all. Um, I know the carnivals and all that be going yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. That's gonna be like top of the list. I know everybody mm -hmm. be excited to go to that. And of course, come with manners. I feel like coming from the south in yes, Louisiana, we yes. have great hospitality. We you do. know what I'm saying? And we right there by the Gulf, so we know the weather. Mm -hmm. It can always be a yeah. thing for us. So going there, it's like, oh, uh, it's like home. But they don't get hurricanes, they if get I remember correctly. Seven months of wetness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the rain. But so, I love rain, so right. that's okay. I'll sit outside all they day and spices. enjoy that. spices. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. We'll make ourselves at home. Big facts, yes, yeah. I love learning about their natural resources. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like the climate i love that yeah. very good video yeah so we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us like this video subscribe turn on the post notification bell we have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like support the channel that way as well as our reaction request form is in our description box below we'll see you soon peace, peace.